my secretary, Nona Tyson, had read in Playboy magazine the Richard Matheson short story, and she brought it to my attention. And she said, you should direct this. She said, this is you. This is up your alley. And how she knew this, I don't know. But I read it, and I, I really grew infatuated with the short story. And I went to the producer I discovered was uh, George Eckstein. And I, I, I lobbied for it very, very hard. And I had just finished directing the first Columbo of the series. And it turned out really, really well. I was really proud of it. And so I showed George my rough cut on the Columbo, which hadn't aired yet, and George liked it also. And then George represented me to the network, to ABC, and I believe he went to Barry Diller, who was head of ABC in those days, and he lobbied my name to Barry, and Barry approved me. And so I, I got this amazing gig. That's when I really felt like, you know, all the television I had directed up until Duel, I had done about seven or eight episodes of different kinds of series like Marcus Welby and Owen Marshall, Name in the Game and things like this. Please, you know, I hope this experience serves me well because I've only got 11 days to shoot a 74-minute movie. And I went out into the desert and I pretty much didn't storyboard Duel, but I drew a map of the story. And I had the art department actually draw a map of the story where all the set pieces were to take place to kind of help myself realize where I was going to put the A, B, C, D, and E cameras because I had five cameras on some of these truck and car chases. So within one mile of highway, I could get a whole lot of shots, at least five angles, then turn the vehicles around, simply turn the cameras around, change lenses, and have them go the other way and be able to use that footage going not only from right to left but from left to right. So I had the thing kind of orchestrated in my head, but I have to tell you that Richard Matheson, who wrote the short story and the screenplay, had laid out this amazing story. You can imagine there was very little dialogue in this, and it was all prose. And I get a lot of credit for figuring out how to make Duel a very suspenseful, Hitchcockian story. But Matheson's script was already Hitchcockian and suspenseful. And I think that was the first time I realized, hey, if I have a good script, and I'm a good director, I can make a pretty terrific movie. I'd like to report a truck driver that's been endangering my life. It was a very bad week for this man. It was a very bad, awful week. I'm sorry about this, Captain. I had no idea they were 96s. What you talking? 32, 96. You trying to call me out? No, sir. It is merely a verbal shorthand. 1032 is a man with a gun. 1096 is your mental subject. How you work this thing? When you wish to talk, press the button. Is we ain't no mental subjects. I've done some dumb things, but I ain't a goddamn mental subject. What's your name, sir? My name's Clovis Poplin, and this here's my old lady, Lucy. Well, what are you doing with our man in there? He's just taking us to Sugar Land to get my boy Langston. There were two different points of view in the Sugar Land Express. The first point of view was you're a captured audience inside the car learning who these people are and the fact that this is an errand of mercy. But then you're the cop's point of view, and they're just fugitives that have one of their uniformed own at gunpoint hijacked in the middle of Texas, a state that doesn't cotton to hijackers. And then you had America's vision of their message that they were at least putting out there, that this was an errand of mercy, and America and the media turned them into folk heroes. Get off. Get off. It, it did not escape me that Billy Wilder had made one of my favorite movies of all time that I had ever seen, which was Ace in the Hole. And that really affected me. And the whole, I guess, carnival atmosphere of a tragic situation and the capitalization of that and the sensationalizing of that. Of course, the studio was reluctant to give me a chance to direct my first feature without a movie star. So Dick Zanik and David Brown, who were my producers, suggested I take it to Goldie Hawn, which I did. And thank goodness, she said yes, and she got us the green light, and I was very happy with her. I thought she was an amazing actress, and she was 
completely cooperative and had thousands of good ideas. And I went out and made this picture, which was not didn't have the cynicism and the bully effect of duel. But what it did have was it was about the in a way it was a little bit ahead of its time because it was about how easy it is to turn criminals into folk heroes. Courtesy of Slankless Hardware. Take care of that boy. I know you love him. And this is from my daughter. Oh, thank you. Honey, when we pick up baby Langston, no more of this sporting around. I mean that we're gonna settle down just like real folks. And of course in the real story and in Sugarland it ended tragically. <laughs> Goddamn the trees in the way, Fino. No, he's going back. He's going back. Yeah. I could get him easy, but it won't be clean. <laughs>